the channel, I'm on IJ. I just got to Meek and those Grease, and I'm gonna just show you the room a little bit, then I'm gonna go out, walk around, show a few things. Now, I've already been in here, you know, trying to get ready. Little shower over here. Got the kitchen, don't drink the water. The water is not good for you. Got me a little sectional, you know, just to kick it up. A little table if I want to read some books or anything. We got whiskey and Charlie. We got the balcony there. Then we got the one bedroom. And then look at the view. So for this trip, I got a package deal. It was a flight from Frankfurt to Mykonos, plus this room. It was $1,000 total, well, it was $1,100 plus the taxes. But I mean, you got your one bedroom, you got your living room, you got this view. I don't know if you can see them or not, but those windmills, they're significant. So I'm about to drop my bags head on out, charge his phone up a little bit and see what the night, the evening, and everything has to offer. I'm only here for two days, well, three days, Friday, Saturday, and I leave Sunday, but it's definitely worth it. A little turn and burn, why not celebrate a little bit and enjoy what life has to offer. Remember, there's no such thing as bad days. What I'll say about Mykonos is it's a small island, but a lot to do. There's different beaches on different sides of the island depending on where you want to be at. And that comes with a lot of walking and a lot of wind. So there would be voiceovers over a lot of this footage. When I'm out and about, I do try to walk everywhere because one is inexpensive and you get to see a lot more. Does it take a while? Yes. But we're going to get a little bit of history of Mykonos and we're going to go see a few things within the actual city. The history of Mykonos goes back for over thousands of years. It's located in the Aegean Sea and it was a coveted prize for different civilizations, such as the ancient Greeks and the Venetians. Once the ancient Greeks got Mykonos, they realized the significance of this island, and they made this into one of the maritime powers. Also, it was a place where they set up to do trading and seafaring with all of the food that they could bring in from the sea. Mykonos came under Venetian rule, and once the Venetians took over the island, they actually fortified it, and they left impressive landmarks, such as medieval castles that actually still stand, and we'll see that later on in the video. We walk through the ruins. It's pretty nice to see. Mykonos came under Venetian rule, and once the Venetians took over the island, they actually fortified it, and they left impressive landmarks, such as medieval castles that actually still stand, and we'll see that later on in the video. We walk through the ruins. It's pretty nice to see. As I was mentioning earlier, the whole city is accessible by foot. So you just need to make sure you know where you're going. Because once you get down in these alleys, as you can see, there's all kinds of different paths that lead different ways. I knew where I was going because I was going straight down to the water. So I knew to keep straight. I will say, make sure you have some good walking shoes because you're going to be putting in steps over 10,000 steps a day, depending on if you're a walker. For me, I like to get out and see everything. So that's why you'll always see me walking on my trips. This first beach that you see here is called Mykonos Town Beach. Now it's very small and it's right here. You can sit out here and just enjoy some sun if you want to. There were other beaches along the island because Mykonos is known for its partying. But as we're going around this little bend here, you start to see all of the restaurants where you can sit down, get you some seafood and actually look at the sunset on the water. Over the last couple decades, Mykonos has began to become a very popular tourist destination. And from the people that I were talking to out here while I'm just sitting and eating, they were saying that this is one of their favorite places to come and relax. Of course, there's a legendary nightlife. I did get to experience some of that, but I'm solo, so I can only do so much. But just seeing the GNC, and as I said, looking at the sunset, it's very relaxing. I was only here for two, three days, and it was worth every minute of it. I mean, I got to see a lot. I got to experience things. And you know, I'm into history, so that was my main focus, to find out a little bit about this island and why Greece wanted this island so much. What you see here now, we're about to come up where the cruise ships are and where the actual ships dock. 
Now, the cruise ships, like any other island, they are the main lifeline to the businesses that are here on Mykonos Island. Now, what I can say is make sure you choose the time that you come. I came for 4th of July. Obviously, that's not a holiday for them. It's an American holiday. But you want to make sure you come in some downtimes because there can be an influx in tourists. And I'm talking about the infrastructure here. It's a lot to do. But once you get these swarms of people getting off of the ships, it's going to be a lot of people. You might not be able to see everything that you want to see. So that's also something that you want to check out before you go over here. If you were to come in on a cruise ship, just seeing what time of year is the highest. I wouldn't know. I had to do some research on that. After all of this walking, you know, I got to find me something to eat. I just checked in. I set everything down, charged up my phones, came out and got you guys this footage. So I was looking for something to eat, and there's four things I look for when it comes to deciding where and what I'm going to eat. The number one, location. Number two, the food. Number three, the drink. And number four, the music. You give me all four of those, oh, it don't matter where we at. I'm going to make the best of it. So the spot I'm eating at now is called Faro. It's right here on the water. Walk down here, you know, I got to get some drink in the system, a little drinky drink. We're going to start off with a little bit of margaritas, you know what I'm saying? They ain't got no yak here, but we're going to go pick up some because we got some from the airport. We'll probably get us, I'm not really that big on fish, but they got a... Uh, they got an exotic shrimp salad and mango and avocado. I'm gonna try that. Why not? And then I, I was gonna try some crispy shrimp uh, with spicy mayo, but I'm like, nah, I'm good on that. I'll probably just get some fries on the side of that salad. Gotta eat light so we can absorb all the drink we drink tonight. But no, it's pretty cool here. Prices aren't that bad. What, the salad's 18 year old, the drink, uh, was it 13? So it ain't bad. Probably about 50 piece here, but you know, I'm probably gonna drink. They got the game on Germany playing right now, they losing to Spain, but it is what it is. My first day there, I didn't really get to get out and see much. I did step out that evening. There was a few people out here that I ran into. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but today we're going to make it over to the infamous windmills that I was telling you guys about in the intro. And what you're seeing here is the traditional Mykonos architecture. Now, it's deeply rooted in the island's history and culture, and the white color of the building serves as a very practical and aesthetic purposes. Now, one of the reasons is because it reflects the sunlight. The immense Mediterranean sun, it can scorch. Let me tell you, it's hot. That's why I have my glasses on the whole day. But the white color helps reflect that heat, keeping the interior colors of the buildings cool and comfortable. Also, in the past, Mykonos was a frequent target to different type of pirates in those ships. But the whitewashed buildings blended seamlessly with the surrounding landscape. So the pirates, when they were looking over at the island, they couldn't really spot it from a distance. Another iconic thing you're going to see in Mykonos besides the architecture is these narrow alleyways. As I mentioned earlier, you could get lost in here. But the reason that these alleyways are put in these different locations is because it's designed to protect the city from strong winds and create an intimate and privacy setting. So as this wind is blowing, once you're walking through the town, you also get that little bit of breeze, but it's not too much that is overwhelming, as you're going to see later on in all of my footage where you got to hear the voiceover. After walking through the city, we finally make it over to one of the most recognizable landmarks on the island, the cluster of windmills on Cato Mili. Now, these windmills were built in the 16th century during the Venetian era. And what they were used for, obviously, they were windmills, but it wasn't for wind power. It was actually used to grind up grain, which is something that the island desperately needed. 
So they had 16 windmills throughout the whole island that they used for these purposes. The windmills aren't in commission anymore. It's more of a tourist spot now, but it's also a symbol for the local residents of the history of Mykonos Island, and not only the island, but the actual town. Now, when the sun sets, these windmills, they cast long shadows across the landscape, and there has been many pictures. There's some famous pictures also taken of these shadows from the actual windmills. And here is just me taking a step back and really grasping what I'm looking at. This is the GNC. I sat out here for at least 30 minutes and I just sat in the wind and had my thoughts. I will tell you, you know, beaches are my favorite places. So when I'm out here just looking at the water, this is one of the most relaxing things that I could do. And I really appreciate it every moment here. Now I've done a lot of stuff in my life. You know, I never really felt like I achieved much, but traveling just does something to my spirit. You probably can't fall in the wind and I'll probably put this over it. But just knowing where I came from and where I'm at now and doing what I want, can't get no better than this, man. That's why you always hear me say no such thing as bad day. I'm only up on top of the hill over there, but look where we at. At this point, I'm just walking around the city. I seen what I wanted to see. I came for the windmills. I seen those. I walked through the city, got me some souvenirs, some memorabilia to bring back with me. Got some postcards from my mom, go down by the water, sit out here and just relax. The city's very peaceful. I have started traveling alone and I'm really starting to enjoy that time that I'm getting to myself. The last thing I do want to see, there is a castle. And if I could be king for a day, even for an hour, I consider that as a win and my trip will be complete. So we're going to head on over there, but just look at what we're, what we're witnessing. Mykonos, Greece, very nice. Now I still got to make it over to Santorini, but as of right now, Mykonos town works for me. The Castro of Mykonos or the castle of Mykonos, it was built in the 13th century by the Venetians and it used to be a medieval fortress. It was a vital defense stronghold, but now really all it provides is a glimpse into the past and you get the beautiful view of the GNC. Now, this castle was put here to protect the small island from pirate ships that may have came or any other threats. And that's what we talked about with the architecture being in white. So from a distance, you wouldn't be able to notice it. But this place imposed fortifications that was impregnable fortress for centuries. Over time though, the castle eventually evolved from a military stronghold to a bustling town, kind of what we see today, but at a slower pace. With the narrow winding streets, it was a home for the merchants and they were able to go straight from the sea, going through this castle into the city. Now, there are a lot of churches here and they're marked with the blue tops, monasteries also. And then you have the mansions that reflect the wealth of the inhabitants that were actually here on the island. And a lot of that was passed down through generations. Although the castle may be ruins now, there was a significant battle that was taking place out here. It was called the Battle of Mykonos in 1794. It was over in the actual harbor. Now this battle was between the British Royal Navy and the French. The British ended up winning this and coming out victorious and they captured the French ship. Now this battle of Mykonos didn't actually take place using the castle, but the castle was there for defense purposes. So the island, it did have its own defense, but the battle took place between the British and the French. And of course we know that the British came out victoriously. So this here was really just a deterrence. If they were to come on land, then yeah, the castle would have taken care of that. But they didn't, they had their little squabble out there in the water. Here. I done walked all the way around over here. Confused just because it looks good and it feel good out here. Keep you some water, stay hydrated. It's a lot of walking, it's a lot of stuff to cover. You can get the ATVs and stuff, but yeah, I'll be doing some drinking. I'm not about to be on the ATV and I've been drinking. But we got some high quality H2O here. <sighs> 
All right, there you go. 48 hours in Mykonos, Greece, Mykonos Town. I highly recommend it. It is a nice tourist spot. If you come and visit Europe, go there for two, three days. Enjoy yourself some beach time. Get you some seafood. See the sights. Enjoy the sun. Obviously, the island is bigger than just Mykonos Town, and there's other beaches. There's a lot of party spots if you want to go to. They also have restaurants that overlook the sea, so you can go there specifically for the sunset. Just comment down below if you have any questions about it. I'll be able to fill you in because I did go to some places off camera like I always do. It's just I wanted to give you guys the key points. So if you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm Mode IJ. This is Travel Mo, and we have more videos coming because I have over 200 hours of footage from different places I've been in 2024. Thanks for watching. I'm out, and I appreciate you. Remember, get your passport, book your flights early, get you a hotel, and take that trip. Don't wait on anybody because if you wait on someone, you will never go. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy. Thank you.